We left the truck up in the air and the wheels off and didn't finish doing any of that skirting from last week's video because while we install this condenser and radiator, fan and shroud and all the plumbing, we're also going to be putting water in this thing today. So it's much easier to deal with hose clamps or identify leaks and repair them with the truck a little more open. So now that we're at final install, we can get our shroud and our fan mounted up. And again, both, well, all three of these pieces came in a kit from Summit. Nice fit. Oh, make sure we put the logo at the top. This looks like you probably just run some self-drilling screws through these, these pre-drilled holes. Because this is not part of the radiator actually cooling, it's more just a structure. You run those four in, and they sent this nice coated hardware, and these nut certs are already installed to run through the fan. Make sure there's no chance those will be too long and make contact with the radiator fins. I don't think they will. Now let's check this fan out. Looks like it's got the plastic clips that go on it. And it says cold case stamped on this fan, but I'm going to guess they didn't start making their own fans. So I'm sure someone makes it for them. Looks like this is the angle they want it to be aligned, which works out because we're going to put our fan relay over here on the radiator support. So that'll make a short run. And these are male spades. We'll just put female spade links between here and the relay itself. I also see clips on a couple of these blades, which is good because it means someone took the time to balance it and we don't have to deal with that because I honestly don't have those skills. This is 100% something you want to test before getting it fully installed. Good test. Don't forget to put your O-rings and plenty of oil on them, on your AC lines. Everything I read about these say, do not over tighten, do not over tighten. And honestly, on the last truck that we did, I was surprised how nothing did leak and I just never felt like they were all that tight but what you don't want to do I guess is crush that o-ring to the point where it doesn't seal it's a lot easier to find a leak when you're charging these systems and snug these things up a little more than it is to have crushed an o-ring have to disassemble it put a new o-ring on and put it back together So the radiator is bolted in, but I've kind of wanted to point out and not really miss this step for you guys. There's actually rubber isolators between the radiator and the radiator support. I think you can just see the little black rubber bits there, the top and bottom, which provides a little bit of standoff. But the idea is 
I guess you don't want that vibration to translate into that radiator because it could break down over time. I see all the factory ones always have like rubber grommets, so I figured we probably better do that too because I'm sure those engineers did it for a reason. I got all the hoses and stuff buttoned up because I figured that would just be boring to watch on video. All the AC lines are ran. That's our trinary switch and I've got it ready to start wiring. This is, this is still just loose in case I want to pull it out to do the solder or crimp and seal. All the AC lines are done. Like I said, heater lines are ran down to the water pump. And except for these two hose clamps, I was able to rotate most of them to where kind of they're, they're not right where you have to look at the fastener. And of course, these are kind of not possible to do so. This steam line is all done. <laughs> I got to looking. This is pretty close. And I thought, oh no, did I not leave, leave enough room for that elbow the way that's mounted? But because the elbow is short on one side and long on the other, we did test fit it with the short side in the throttle body and the long side with our intake tube. So although it kind of makes contact at first, once you get it in place, actually is okay because we'll be able to mount it with our tab to where that's not making contact. got all the hoses tightened up everywhere there seems to be an awful lot of them so here is your pro tip for this week's video Damn, that cap is hard to do. I think according to Summit's description this radiator doesn't come with a cap and it actually did the steel convinced me to buy this 20 or 30 dollar one which I didn't need to do there's your pro tip when you're testing your coolant system for the first time, or maybe you've had a leak and you've lost coolant and you're trying to locate it, don't put antifreeze in it. Get distilled water, because it's a safe to have in your engine if something's left in there. And if you have a leak, why would you waste $12 a gallon coolant when you can waste a dollar a gallon distilled water? Also, if you do have a leak inside, like your heater core area and behind the firewall, you really don't want that to be leaking antifreeze because that smells like cat breath. I guess I'll give you this one warning. If you live in super cold climates, you want to keep in mind that if you just drain your radiator when this exercise is over, you still have just water in your engine block and in your heater core. So you're going to want to either flush that out with coolant to make sure that you're not leaving straight water in. Or if you live like, like me, I'm not in a super cold climate. It's not going to hurt us a bit to leave whatever stays in the block and the heater core if we just drain this big radiator. I think that's everything. Let's see what we forgot if we start it and it doesn't work. I'll definitely take this off.
Got that coolant to close to 200 there. Decided to shut it down because it will actually heat up when it sits here and soaks a little. And I don't want to overdo it this first test, but only thing I could see that was leaking was the little steam vent line going into the radiator. That thing was pretty tight, so not sure. Maybe just get some tape and probably wrap that up. If full temp, I didn't see leaks. I'll tell you what I think is the biggest blessing, and I have honestly prayed about this before we started it, were these lines for the power steering pump. I had real fear that we were going to have issues with that. Just because we built them ourselves, and those things aren't super easy to do, and power steering's pretty high pressure. It was a good second test, putting Teflon tape on that steam vent, and I temporarily wired the fan to run off the holly just to make sure all that was good to go. And it is. The complicated part is when you have to run a setup like this. And the reason that exists is the holly sends a ground trigger output when it reaches temperature. The air conditioning system, specifically the Resto Mod Air Bantam, they send a positive output when it's time to turn the fan on in case you turn on anything that have to do with like defrost or air conditioning. So you can't use the same relay, you've got to figure out a way to do both. So basically I ran two independent relays and then tied the output from both relays to the fan power. Hopefully that takes care of what we need. Now I'm going to change the oil, put it on the ground, drain that uh, water out and put coolant in. Final checklist are driving me crazy. Got the old blue Powerade recovery bottle. Out of this whole build, I forgot to buy a catch can for that coolant overflow. Airplane's loud. You better believe we will be taking a tool bag along for the ride. Not gonna be stranded for something that all I needed was a Phillips screwdriver for. Before anyone points it out, See belts on. Weird. I think we're going to need to adjust 
the kick down cable because I know that affects like how fast it wants to go through gears. It does need transmission adjustment. It barely does this. Shifts a little early. So I've adjusted the kick down cable as much as I think my knowledge is going to take me. Well, we have a professional look at it or we may have to pull the transmission. But we're running 70 miles an hour right now at about 2300 RPM. Doesn't mind it a bit. We're going to go get the AC charged because it's warming up. Yeah, I had uh, 68 mil way back in the day. And then I had. Absolutely thrilled with the AC system. As you can see, it had a 20 degree differential and that was surface temps to the vent, which the air inside there is colder. So more than 20 degree differential from the ambient air. I think that's about all you can ask from an AC system. So it should work really well. Also, I got the hinges sandblasted and painted. We went the flat black. That might be a good transition from this gloss to the patina on the bottom side of the hood when that gets installed, hopefully later today. I'll continue to tweak on the transmission, maybe unhook the torque converter uh, so it can't lock up and see if that's the issue we have with it trying to hold the gears and not want to downshift. Overall, I'm really happy with our first test drive. I mean, if I can only find one thing to complain about out of an entire truck being built from the frame up, that works for me. I appreciate you guys sticking through this build for me. I'll do another video of like 100% finished, but for the most part, this is the final assembly. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.